Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to Cancer Prevention in the Workplace today, uh, sponsored by the Maine Health Management Coalition. The Maine Health Management Coalition is a purchaser-led partnership, and we work here in Maine to um, improve health care and maximize value of health care services for our members. We are a membership organization, and we're made up of providers, affiliates, consumers, purchasers, and health plans, brokers, and benefit consultants. And here um, we have opportunities to network, learn, and influence if you join us as a member. Uh, we do things like identify best practices in healthcare. We do a lot of work with uh, custom analytics. We have lots of opportunities for networking with main health and business leaders. Um, we like to um, be able to influence change through our work groups and committees, and we offer a lot of participation in membership, educational, and networking events. We are very happy today to introduce our today's presenter, Danielle Maxwell, an account manager in cor uh, corporate relations. Um, Danielle Maxwell is the account manager of corporate relations for Maine, New Hampshire, and Northern Massachusetts for the American Cancer Society. She works with large corporate accounts, engaging them throughout the American Cancer Society in employee engagement, workplace, he workplace health and wellness, causing branding opportunities, sponsorship, volunteering, and government affairs. She's worked with many large corporations, helping them improve their health and wellness programs and policies in the areas of access to care, tobacco, nutrition, physical activity, and prevention early detection. We are really happy um, to have Daniel today and um, thank her so much for her time and energy in putting this into today's webinar. Just a few logistical comments. Um, if you could um, save your question, questions and write your questions and answers in the chat box and we'll save them for a question and answer period at the end, which I'll be reading out loud to, uh, to Danielle. And the um, webinar audio and slides will be available on the Maine Health Management Coalition website after the webinar today. So with that, we're going to hand over the controls here to Danielle. Good afternoon, all. Um, thank you for inviting me here to speak about the American Cancer Society and how we work with our corporate partners to prevent cancer in the workplace. As stated, my name is Danielle Maxwell, and I work with our corporate partners in northern New England to engage them in the American Cancer Society. The American Cancer Society, or ACS, is a global health organization with a presence in each state. Our local main office is actually in the same office park as the Maine Health Management Coalition in Topsom. Our Topsom office staff works with um, our local main community to prevent, support, find cures, and fight back against cancer. To offer some baseline for our conversation today, cancer death rates have dropped 22% in just the last two decades. Over 5,000, excuse me, over 500 lives per day um, are being saved from cancer that would otherwise have been lost if previous cancer mortality rates um, had not declined. More people are surviving cancer than ever before. Today there are about 14.5 million cancer survivors in the U.S., a number that is expected to grow to almost 19 million by the year 2024. Due to population growth and advances in early detection and treatment. As more people survive and thrive against a cancer diagnosis, addressing their unique cancer survivor needs becomes even more important. While we've been uh, making great progress, there's still lots of work that we can do. We estimate that 1.6 million Americans will be diagnosed with cancer this year and more than half a million will die from this disease. These figures skyrocket to 14 million people diagnosed each year around the globe, and then 8 million cancer deaths. Most of us have an immediate family member or friend with cancer. 
and one in four serve as a cancer um, caregiver. Cancer costs us lives of those who would otherwise um, because we have to care for them and drags down our economy as well. We know a great deal of this suffering and death is needless. Lung cancer alone causes one in five deaths worldwide and is thoroughly preventable. In Maine alone, we estimate that over 8,800 people will receive a cancer diagnosis this year. And 3,300 people will die from the disease. Today we know a substantial portion of cancer deaths could be preventable by doing uh, what we know works, avoiding tobacco, maintaining a healthy weight, eating a nutritious diet, exercising, and getting the recommended cancer screenings. That is why the American Cancer Society is working so hard to spread the word about cancer prevention and early detection. While our advocacy affiliate, ACS CAN, is fighting um, for local, state, and federal policies to keep us healthy. We, work, we are working through our partners to ensure that cancer prevention and early detection is a top priority, including our corporate partners in their wellness efforts for their employees and their dependents. Today we know that about half of, half of all cancer deaths could be prevented by making lifestyle choices like avoiding tobacco, staying healthy, at, uh, and maintaining a healthy weight, eating right, keeping active, and getting your recommended cancer screening. The society works with employers to assess their workplace wellness needs and help develop and implement a tangible plan to create a culture of health and wellness, bring cancer costs and healthcare costs down or under control, and improve employee um, workplace morale and productivity. Here's another slide demonstrating the need for healthy behaviors and the importance of why there is an ROI to create a culture of health in the workplace. Since there is such a need, the society works with employers to assess their workplace wellness programs and help develop and implement a tangible plan. There are five key strategies we focus on while working with employers. Effective communication strategies, communicating the best way for your employee base, whether it be a message from a top-down leader or on a message board, we try to strive to increase communication throughout the organization through a diverse plan so that the message reached most, if not all, employees. An opportunity, <coughs> second, an, op an opportunity for employees to engage. Have a variety of ways for your employees to engage. Trying um, to open at least one or several opportunities to employee dependents that are on their health insurance as well. Thirdly, um, leadership engagement at all levels. We strongly recommend a health and wellness committee that draws from all levels of your organization so that all voices can be heard in messaging and activities. Fourth, using existing resources through your health care plans and local partners like the American Cancer Society or your local hospital. Um, using all programs um, available and taking advantage of them. And fifth, continuous evaluations, both through surveys of the employees, health risk assessments, biometric screenings, and also regularly asking your healthcare plans for your screening rates and claims. We help thousands of companies each year improve their wellness practices and programs. Each company is different and their needs um, are as well. 
so our initial meeting is to discuss their current programs and how we can uh, fulfill their needs within those programs. As you can see, we work with many companies within New England, but we have a real opportunity to get material out uh, to the companies, especially here in Maine. We provide comprehensive workplace wellness resources to help employers reduce their employees um, their risk of cancer. Our resources include tobacco sensation programs and policies. For example, our tobacco policy planner is a 30-minute questionnaire, which once the employer completes, they'll have access to customized resources and support for their employers for their employees. Um, this resource um, sometimes is used by companies by putting it up on their internet or um, just adopting the policies in general and changing um, their employee, their handbook. Our Fresh Start program is a peer-to-peer -peer smoking sensation program where the facilitator is trained via web-based material and then has access again to um, specific resources that they can print on demand. And then lastly is our Quit for Life program, which I'll highlight in the following slide. <coughs> the Active for Life program is a physical activity program. Uh, this program has worked really well for organizations uh, who both have either many sites or many departments that are looking to compete against one another. We have suggested um, during this program using walking meetings, um, either as a team or just getting out and walking around your office while you're on a call. Our free um, health and wellness content, our content subscription service is a free e-subscription to the Society's content toolkits and resources. For example, the things that we highlight are in January we focus on colorectal cancer, March is on safety, April is getting tested um, for cancer and the recommended um, screenings, May is nutrition and physical activity, July prostate cancer awareness, August breast cancer awareness, and September is quitting tobacco. As you can see, um, these materials come out two months in advance. So for example, for September, they come out two months in advance in knowing that um, the Great American Smokeout is happening in November so that folks have time to plan their activities and, and necessary <laughs> programs. One example of a company using these uh, products is they, <coughs> excuse me, um, they focus um, on a concept called Take Five, where they focus on three key areas throughout the year um, to increase conversation with their employees. The key areas that they focused on last year were cancer screenings, tobacco, and nutrition. Uh, during a meeting or huddle, they took about five minutes to talk about one of these topics. It allowed the managers to start conversations that would otherwise not normally have happened with the employees. And it also allowed the employees to feel comfortable to take 15 minutes to go for a walk rather than sitting at their desk. Another resource that's available is a monthly healthy living newsletter. Many companies just forward this directly out to their employees, and some companies just pull the articles directly and add it into their internal newsletter. It's another opportunity to just get in information in front of your employees. We also, similar to the Tobacco Policy Planner, we have a Nutrition Policy Planner, which offer, it's a similar like program, a 30-minute questionnaire, and then once they complete, they get customized resources. Again, this program is also uh, commonly put on the internet uh, for the employees to have access to all of these great resources. And lastly, uh, we offer a comprehensive workplace health assessment service. Um, this includes a customized, it's customized to, to each health um, program and to each employer. Um, 
we have found that this is just the probably one of the best resources that we offer. It's, it's a basically it's a gap analysis around five key areas: tobacco, nutrition, physical activity, access to care, and cancer screening. To note, all of our programs are free of charge, um, so please take advantage of them. Since tobacco is uh, and, and the and not using tobacco is so important to overall health, the society has partnered uh, with Allure Wellbeing to offer the Quit for Life program to states, employers, and health plans. The Quit for Life program is an evidence-based telephone and web-based program which offers multiple strategies to help tobacco users develop and implement a plan um, to quit for good. In addition, there is a free app um, to be able to download for both Android and Apple users, which highlights tips and tricks on quitting. After setting up a health and wellness program with consistent messaging, I have seen the greatest ROI in companies adopt adopting a tobacco policy with the intention of going tobacco free. There's two examples that I'd like to share with you today. One is a manufacturing organization that took about 18 months of them walking around the floor um, handing out non-smoking tobacco uh, literature, nicotine gum, and then the quick kits as well. Um, the quick kits are kind of interesting. They include a stick of gum to remind you to stick with it, Smarties to remind you how smart you are for quitting, a rubber band to remind you to stay flexible and stretch your limits, and also you can put it around your wrist and snap it every time you have a craving for a cigarette. A tea bag to remind you how to relax um, when you get a craving, since cravings only last a very short time. Tea is also a natural aid to stop smoking. And then a coffee stirrer to remind um, their employees to stir things up when you get a craving, such as exercising, going for a walk instead of smoking. You can also chew on it or play with it like a cigarette. Um, they've had great success, um, and they have been tobacco-free now for over four years um, in an environment that otherwise normally wouldn't be being a manufacturing organization. Another good example is a car dealership, which it took them about six months to go tobacco-free. Um, there was a cancer illness in their management team, and they felt that they wanted to do something positive for their employees. Um, with this illness. Um, they told their employees that they were switching to this policy and then they used our Fresh Start program and as well as their health insurance benefits and materials uh, to have their employees go tobacco free. To engage the are the top leaders of an organization in the fight against cancer, um, as well as in their employees' health. The American Cancer Society has developed the CEOs Against Cancer Initiative. It's a premier partnership of leading chief executives in the American Cancer Society dedicated to eliminate unnecessary deaths and suffering from cancer nationally and globally. CEOs Against Cancer creates a unique opportunity with the companies with the, excuse me, with the country's uh, thought leaders in creating a gateway to deeper partnerships with corporations, healthcare systems, and community leaders. Today, there are 14 active CEOs against cancer chapters across the country. In addition, there are several uh, chapters in development and will be holding their first meeting this year. The New England chapter has 32 members from Fortune 500 companies and the largest companies in their states. These CEOs meet annually to discuss employee health. The chapter is focused on increasing um, colorectal screening through our 80% by 2018 campaign. Since this cancer is so preventable through the recommended screenings,
colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S. when men and women are combined, yet it is prevented or can be detected at its early stages. Screening could prevent as many as 50,000 colorectal deaths each year. Yet more than one in three adults in the U.S. are not getting screened as recommended. There are several different screening options to choose from. All recommended tests can save lives from colon cancer. Options include tests that need to be done in a hospital outpatient setting or a doctor's office like a colonoscopy, as well as tests that can be done in the privacy of your own home like, school, like stool tests. We encourage everyone over 50 to choose the test that is best for them. The Society is committed to increasing screening and saving lives from colon cancer. We work to increase access to screenings in underserved communities, providing information and support for those who are facing a colon cancer diagnosis and conducting research to save lives from colon cancer. And our advocacy affiliate, ACS CAN, is advocating to um, increase access to quality screenings and treatment for all people with colon cancer. In 2014, the National Colorectal Roundtable, a national coalition of private, public, and voluntary organizations founded by the American Cancer Society and the CDC, announced a nationwide initiative to increase colorectal screening to 80% by 2018. The research has shown that increasing the screening rates to 80% by 2018 would prevent more than 200,000 deaths from col colorectal cancer between the years 2013 and 2030, including 21,000 just in the year 2030 alone. More than 300 organizations have signed the 80% by 2018 pledge, committing to the shared goal of increasing screening rates in the U.S. and in their organizations. A great example of this is one organization through our CEOs Against Cancer program. This company partnered with their healthcare, pl healthcare plan slash provider and Quest Diagnostics to have all non-compliant health plan users receive a fecal test at home. This test went to their employee, employee's home and through the health care provider in Quest Diagnostics, the, custom, the company did not know which employees were non-compliant to ensure that HIPAA was maintained. They did have great returns though, with an additional 12% of folks screened in that population and 6% of this group having abnormalities in their testing and needing further diagnostic test. Another way we work with organizations is through ACS CAN, our advocacy affiliate, who works in every state house, working to fight both for local and national priorities. The ACS CAN focuses on increasing funding for cancer research, passing laws to reduce tobacco use, improving access to quality, affordable health care, and promoting care that ensures cancer patients a quality of life. For 2017 in Maine, we are focusing on accepting federal funding to increase access on health care coverage through Medicaid slash Maine Care increasing the price of tobacco products, rising the minimal uh, legal age of purchasing tobacco products to 21, and prohibiting tanning bed use for minors, along with some other minor campaigns. While each company increases prevention, 
there are, are some times when your employees need resources to get through a cancer diagnosis, either for themselves or for a loved one. The, the ACS provides many um, resources to be able to help them through this journey. We work with volunteers and other organizations to make sure that cancer patients and their caregivers get the support they need when they need it the most. We help patients with their most pressing needs, such as getting a ride to treatment, finding a place to stay um, when you're having to go for treatment far away from home, finding emotional support, and getting a reliable, reliable information about your cancer diagnosis anytime, day or evening. We serve millions of people each year with trusted information and services. Last year, 61 million people visited our website for crucial cancer information. We answered 7.5 million calls, emails, and online chats since 1997. Each year, we provide more than 12 million educational materials and brochures, and over 400,000 patients have received rides to treatment appointments since 2005, and more than six, that includes more than 6.3 million trips. We've provided 4 million nights of free lodging at our Hope Lodge facility since 1984 when opening, saving about a half a million patients and caregivers, about a half a million dollars as well. And our, pa and our patient navigators have helped more than a half a million patients to support and navigate them through the healthcare system. One resource available is our National Cancer Information Center, or NCIC. They're available by phone, email, or online chat, and open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with any question you might have. They're even open on Christmas. Every patient in person has their own reason for calling. More than 1 million folks contacted us last year. Most um, are calling us for help with general questions about their cancer diagnosis, questions specifically uh, to um, that specific type of cancer that they have, financial and other assistance for cancer patients, transportation and lodging while facing uh, cancer, emotional support, information about cancer screening, prevention or detection, insurance questions. Caregivers call about caring uh, for a cancer patient or someone who is unfortunately near the end of life, making a donation and then navigating our event websites as well. In addition to the information we provide online and by phone, the Society provides 12 million free educational materials and brochures each year. Publishing three peer-reviewed clinical journals and, and offering 65 books on a variety of cancer topics available through our online bookstore. Through our, through our online Excuse me, through our lodging program, the American Cancer Society provides free or reduced cost overnight accommodations to cancer patients and their caregivers who travel far from home for treatment. Not having to worry about where to stay or how to pay for it allows a patient to focus most on what's important, getting well. For some, this can make a difference between getting treatment and not, unfortunately. Our 31 Hope Lodge facilities in 21 states and Puerto Rico provide 100,000 
um, nights of lodging last year, and 4 million since the program began. Last year alone, we saved cancer patients and their caregivers $39 million in hotel expenses. Through our Hotel Partners Program, the American Cancer Society also partners with local hotels across the country to provide rooms for cancer patients so they don't have to travel back and forth from home to receive treatment. For example, the Hope Lodge program in Boston. Next to Massachusetts, the patients traveling from Maine visited the Hope Lodge in Boston the most. We provided lodging for 330 patients from Maine since opening in 2008. The Road to Recovery Program is another great resource to offer employees having trouble to get to and from treatment. Our 12,000 specialized, trained Road to Recovery volunteer drivers donate their time and their use of their personal vehicle to provide more than 200,000 free rides to cancer patients last year alone. In 2014, we provided 2,200 rides in Maine. The Society provides emotional support to cancer patients including help with their appearance-related side effects that accompany cancer and its treatment. We partner with the Personal Care Products Council Foundation and the Professional Beauty Association to provide free Look Good, Feel Better workshops and educational resources with professional guidance on beauty, skin care, cosmetics, nail care, and hair loss alternatives. These cl classes take place at local hospitals, community centers, and even your local beauty shop. Over the past 25 years, the Look Good Feel Better program has branched out to more people uh, ha that have cancer. These expanded programs include Look Good Feel Better for Teens, Look Good Feel Better for Men, and a Spanish program for women. In addition, materials and virtual workshops are available for patients who are unable to travel to a group setting. In 2014, 227 women participated in the Look Good Feel Better program in Maine. And lastly, the American Cancer Society's Road to Recovery program that matches trained volunteers breast cancer survivors with people facing breast cancer to provide one-on-one -on -one support. These patients are matched to volunteers who have a similar diagnosis, treatment plan, and have a similar personal background. This evidence-based program has been serving those with breast cancer for more than 40 years and successfully helping nearly 1.5 million cope with the diagnosis treatment, and life after breast cancer. Reach Recovery volunteers are carefully screened and trained. They talk to the patients in person over the phone and via email, drawing upon their firsthand knowledge of what it's like to have breast cancer. As you have heard, American Cancer Society offers many programs and services for companies who are looking to prevent cancer as well are looking for those to support their employees through a cancer diagnosis. Please reach out to the society for any questions you might have or resources you might need, either via our 1-800 number, which is on the screen right now, or our website as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danielle. I can tell you're not feeling quite right over there, so I appreciate your hanging in um, for us. Uh, I want to encourage anyone to write uh, in the chat book box any questions they might have. Um, we have uh, three uh, questions right now. 
Um, the first one is we know the American Cancer Society's Great American Smokeout is coming up on November 17th. Are there things employers can do to support activities on this day? There are. There are lots of print-on-demand materials available at cancer.org. Um, if they go to cancer.org, um, they can navigate through to the Great American Smokeout. Um, there's a toolkit available there for employers. Um, there's print materials as far as flyers, brochures, stickers, all things like that. Um, and, but we definitely recommend um, activities during that time. It, it kind of kicks off uh, a nice way for your employers, for your employees to to stop smoking. Sounds like a lot of a um, lot of resources. I was really impressed through your um, presentation today at the variety of support that you provide. I think we all have someone that's been touched by this in our lives. I know of one person in particular that couldn't have gotten to their um, treatments without the the ride support that's provided by you all. So it's really it's wonderful to see the magnitude. The second question that we had in is. For the Take Five strategy, what topics do you suggest managers bring to the meetings? Um, so obviously tobacco, just because um, it's just a, a, a hot topic and you'll see the greatest ROI in regards to that. Um, but nutrition, physical activity is another good one. Um, cancer screenings in general is also a good one um, because what we found, especially with the 80% by 2018, campaign just communicating um, because folks are afraid of the tests a lot of the time or they don't want to do the tests and once you take that stigma away from the tests um, they're they're really not that bad um, as I joke with folks uh, that I work with I, I you know I say that you know going for your colonoscopy you're going to lose a few pounds and you're going to have some good sleep um, you know it, it, it's just it's a necessary evil if you will uh, but once you're able to, to go ahead and, and, and do that, you know, if you have a clean bill of health, you're, um, you're off for 10 years. And, and if you don't, they, they've removed the polyp and, you know, your doctor will recommend the next time uh, you come in. Um, so those are three uh, really big topics that, we've, that I've heard employers focus on. Um, overall health is another one. Um, stress management, I mean, they all kind of play a role in um, the employee's health and well-being. Um, this program has worked, the Take 5 program has worked really well for this company though um, to kind of get those communication lines open um, and the dialogue um, going with uh, not only with the, their HR department but also with their employers, with their, with their managers too. Sounds like a great idea. So um, the last question we have today for you, Danielle, is if you had to pick one issue, where should employers start when implementing workplace wellness policies? I would say tobacco um, is the first one. It, first of all, it, it's the biggest hurdle, if you will. Um, they say on average there's around 20% of the population um, that smokes. Um, it's also the best one for ROI. Um, and once you've implemented a, a strong tobacco policy, um, the other ones just kind of come natural to the employees, um, and they're a lot easier to implement. Um, we have some great resources um, as far as getting that tobacco policy uh, correct for your organization. Um, I would highly recommend the Tobacco Policy Planner. It's really easy. It's right on our website. Uh, you sign in. You do it yourself. Um, and then you get some customized resources back to your organization. Uh, whether you have five employees or whether you have 5,000, um, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's all about a strong policy and, and, and working from there and providing the resources available. That sounds terrific. Well, I thank you again for your time and your energy and your passion for this particular topic. And I just want to remind folks that um, they can find this webinar and the slides for it to go along with it on our main Health Management Coalition website. Um, so thank you again, and thanks, everyone, for your participation. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.